Global Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Having completed more than 100 installations of its locally produced lithium iron phosphate Freedom Light range of batteries across Southern Africa, Johannesburg-based energy solutions provider Freedom One aims to enhance its production capacity amid growing demand. The battery system is designed for stationary and mobile applications. Mia Breitenbach tells us more. Freedom One first launched the Freedom Light lithium iron phosphate battery range in April 2015. Its energy storage battery is a compact integrated energy storage source. Freedom One co-founder Anthony English explains the applications of the storage systems. Freedom Light batteries is a range of different sizes of lithium iron phosphate energy storage solutions and that we've brought to market so that we can provide uh, an economical energy storage source uh, for energy backup, for uh, load shedding and power outages, for incorporating with solar energy projects and also for uh, larger scale commercial and, and grid stability installations. The capacities of the Freedom One range of wall units are measured in kilowatt hours and ranges from 5 kilowatt hours to 80 kilowatt hours. We have a good range of different sizes to suit every application and uh, the power output is uh, very high uh, in terms of short discharge times with very quick charge capabilities. Um, it incorporates a sophisticated battery management system that protects the battery against any type of abuse and uh, therefore we are able to have the confidence in offering a 10-year warranty and uh, it also integrates with various different brands of inverters. We've, we're on eight or nine different brands of inverters now with full functionality of communication between the battery and the inverter. The uh, economics of, the, of the, this new technology far surpass any of the lead acid uh, equivalents on the market. The larger batteries can be custom designed and are scalable for each project. Design proposals have included power output of up to 5 megawatt hours. Freedom One has charted a growth plan with a substantial growth rate, which includes expansion and export plans. Company co-founder Lizette Creel noted that early discussions have been held for exporting to the Philippines, Pakistan and the US. The company has also serviced the markets in Zambia, Botswana and Zimbabwe to date, and it has established a reseller and installation partnership network across Southern Africa. Depending on African market access and financial partner support, Freedom One co-founder Anthony English expects the company to produce about 1,000 batteries next year. Our main objective for this year is to develop our uh, assembly lines and our production capabilities to produce 100 units a month. And then into next year, we're intending to more than double that. Notably, the Freedom Light battery has also been used in the modular renewable energy solution, the Power Turtle. The Power Turtle was launched at Pheasant Folly Primary School in Palm Ridge, Gauteng, in February this year. This system is designed to provide sustainable and secure energy solutions for rural off-the-grid applications. The Freedom Light wall unit batteries incorporate the same technology as that used in Freedom One's first prototype electric vehicle battery solution. This solution was commissioned in 2011 and the prototype conversion has been trialled in a 4x4 vehicle. The vehicle has driven 75,000 kilometres to date on the original battery pack. This has been achieved with a less than 5% capacity degradation. Consequently, Freedom One provides electric mobility solutions for vehicles and boats, particularly for those used in the ecotourism sectors. The 4x4 EV conversions are available as 42 kilowatt hour units, while 6 ampere household type or 32 ampere welding type plugs can be used to charge them. Freedom One is busy assisting several game lodges in converting their game drive vehicle fleets, as well as implementing the Freedom Light battery system on quad bikes and several boats for a notable eco experience. Other news making headlines this week Commodity Shock knocks Africa's growth prospects, Hulusani joins the JSC, leverages demand for energy assets, and needy university students to benefit from new education fund. The World Bank has lowered its 2016 growth forecast for Africa to 3.3% from 4.2% previously after the continent expanded by only 3% in 2015. On the, on the rating story, well, we'll have to see what the raters decide in, um, two th in, in June. But what can be said is that we have to bear in mind that we're talking about the foreign currency rating here that is just above sub-investment grade. The local currency rating is actually two notches above investment grade. And, uh, and 
um, foreign currency denominated debt in South Africa is actually only 10% of total debt. So that is relatively low. Um, so the, the rating agencies, they are going to look at two things. They are going to look at, well, they look at debt to GDP. So they look at debt and they look at GDP. Newly established renewable energy special purpose acquisition company Hulasani has listed on the main board of the JSE, taking advantage of investor demand for energy assets in South Africa and Africa. For us, uh, energy is a lifeblood of our economy. We can't grow our economy without investing in energy. As you've seen, we could not participate in the economic boom uh, during the super cycle of the, of the commodity prices because we were short of energy. For us, we wanted to answer the question of energy capacity and that's why the significance of today is one party that's willing to participate and help and contribute towards building energy capacity, especially clean energy. Former WIT student presidents and SRC members have launched the South African Student Solidarity Foundation for Education with the aim of mobilizing significant financial support for the tertiary education sector in South Africa. I, I think it's a, it's a brilliant initiative, a very necessary one, um, considering the fact that regardless of how we can open the doors to education and essentially increase the access to education, if students are in an environment where they cannot that is not conducive to, to, to their successful learning, then we have a crisis. I mean, at this point in time at Wits University, we have, um, we have been assured that there's a large amount of access to the institution through uh, the fee wave at the beginning of the year where no student had to pay a registration fee um, up front, right? Which meant we can, there was a, a, a huge amount of students that could register. However, these students don't have a bursary and they don't have any confirmed uh, funding at that point in time, which means they can't, they can't uh, you know, get themselves accommodation, they can't get themselves transport money, they can't get themselves food through, through stipends and so forth. So there's many things that students need um, once they're in the system to ensure that they, they can excel and succeed within the system. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.